Hi, welcome to the Commercial Gas Engineer channel. On the A13 on my way to work, gonna have to stop off and get some petrol from BP. Then jump over the Dartford crossing. The weather's not too bad in the UK today. It's not always bad. Sometimes we have storms and so on, but thankfully we got a bright one today. I recall when you had to stop at the Dartford Crossing to pay with coins, that's changed now. There's looking towards east of the Thames and over there is looking to the west of the Thames. Look at this lovely bridge. On this particular call out we have a boiler that appears to be overheating. So it's coming up with a fault code of F83, dry fire. When the burner starts, the temperature change registered at the flow or return temperature sensor is non-existent or too small. Insufficient water in the product. The flow or return temperature sensor is not in the correct position on the pipe. I had a look inside to look at the magma clean and look further down to see what was inside this boxing. Got the light on and looked in and then discovered that there is a pump down there external to the boiler so i'm gonna have to pull this unit out and there's also some gate valves down there i'm gonna pull this box in out and investigate f83 here's the pipe work above the boiler goes up into the loft space and this is the boiler with the case off Just having a little recce before I get too many tools out. So I did press the reset button after making a note of the fault code to see what would happen. And funny enough, when I turned the power off, the boiler got upset with me. I didn't expect that to happen, but I didn't realize that if you turn the boiler off too many times, then a loading symbol comes on. And basically, while this is not a fault function in itself, the visibility of this function symbol on the display for prolonged periods could indicate there are other issues at play, such as circulation problems or incorrect setup of the system. Boiler anti-cycling time is active. So I had to wait a while for that to go back to normal. I found a controller on the other side of the wall, which had a timer and so on and different bits on it, like a wireless controller. So the boiler had power to the pump, but the pump was not budging. I did get the case off as well and have a look at the PCB's connections, but I don't think there was anything wrong with the PCB, but it was short cycling and I was a bit unsure what was going on. I had a look in the loft to see the F&E tank to make sure there was water in there. And yes, there was, and the float was operating, but I know that these can also get blocked up. Even though there's water in there, I know they can get blocked. Look at the old tank. Then that job was done. I jumped on the ferry and the ferry was waiting for me. And it was quite a quick transition rather than going through the Blackwall Tunnel. I had a lovely view of the sun setting as I crossed the Thames. Then in London again for another call out, approaching... Westminster Abbey. On this particular unit, they had no hot water to the building, to the showers and so on. It's funny because I had to write it down on paper as to what the problem was because sometimes things get lost in translation. So I had a look at the drawings. It's good to get, when there's a, a fault that you have to find and it doesn't seem obvious, it's good to get pen and paper out and start writing down what you see to get your head around it, to get a full picture. So I'm checking to see where there's valves, to see what's connected, what's not, where there's heat exchangers, and to get every get a good picture of what is happening. Try to not rush in if you can help it. So what did I find? I found a secondary hot water pump completely seized, but I don't think that this is new, a new situation. I think that this has been happening for a very long time. I don't think that this was the cause, but obviously their hot water would come out a lot quicker. 
if their secondary hot water pump was working. But I put a recommend. Then I went to the circulating pump, hot water circulating pump, to check to see if there was power to it and if it was circulating. And I could see that there was a difference in the amps. Unfortunately, the control knob did fly off. This pump was in quite a bad state. I could barely see what amps it should be delivering. But I could see there was a difference when I turned the power on. I was concerned when it started spraying across the room, but nonetheless, it still was circulating heat around the chlorophyll. So that's when it's off. Notice the difference. But I don't think this pump is performing as well as it should, but nonetheless, it's doing enough to get heat around the core. So here you have it. There's a freeway valve there. And then in between, I saw a bypass on the freeway valve. And then this is the flow going into the coal and the flow going out well this pipe wasn't getting hot going into the coal so you can see now that the flow has gone up from 22 celsius to 24 when i arrived it was 22 now it's going up so you can see again here that the temperature is going up and this is the pump spraying out to can you believe water sprayed from here when i took it off all the way to over here so I managed to get them hot water and then made my way home on a lovely day. This is Tower Bridge, or should I say Tower of London and then Tower Bridge over there. There was a lot of traffic approaching the, the tunnel. Uh, there's a little shortcut around. Then I eventually got onto the A13. Until next time, bye bye bye.